Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sula, fellow trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. On our last video, I talked about foramenal stenosis, which is compression of the nerve in the foramen, typically from either disc height collapse or scoliosis, where that nerve, because over time as that disc has collapsed, the foramen is narrow and the nerve gets compressed and then people get buttock and leg pain. So if you fail non-surgical treatment, surgery is a great way to treat foramenal stenosis. We do surgery when the buttock and leg pain, pins, needles, tingling, weakness, etc., is affecting your quality of life. In general, surgery is much better for treating buttock and leg pain than back pain. So if you only have back pain, I'd be very careful about having any type of surgery for foramenal stenosis before you rule out other things that might cause back pain like facet joint syndrome, disc degeneration, etc. There's two ways to treat lumbar foramenal stenosis. The one is direct decompression, and the other is either direct or indirect decompression, plus an inner body fusion, and that fusion aspect is really the important aspect of treating the foramenal stenosis. So first, let's talk about direct decompression. This is usually done through a small incision through the back, and you use a small retractor, where really you simply go in, make a little window called a laminotomy, and after you make the window, you can then go in and take the pressure off of the nerve in the foramen. So here you'll see uh, the window with the bone being removed and this yellow line shows the nerve that's coming out, that L5-S1 foramen. Now, the real issue is often what happens is the foramenal stenosis is occurring because the facet joint, which is this little joint that's connecting the bones, uh, has a spur that's pushing the nerve and you're trying to directly take that spur off of the nerve. So that means you have to take part of the facet joint. So really when you're decompressing for foramenal stenosis, it's something called a partial facetectomy, which, makes, which means taking part of the facet off and foramenotomy. Otomy just means to make open. So foramenotomy is to make the foramen open by taking part of the facet off. From a stability standpoint, you really only should be taking 50% of the facet off. If you take more than 50% or half of the facet away, what can happen is this entire level at L5-S1 can collapse. So if that collapses, that's a problem and, and uh, instability develops, and then you would need a fusion. So not everybody's a candidate for a direct decompression or a simple foramenotomy. Some patients that have foramenal stenosis and leg pain have weakness as well because that nerve has been compressed to a point where the muscle uh, can't work. And so, for example, some people may have a foot drop as they're walking. The, ability of a decompressive operation to give strength back is probably only about 50%. Not everybody gets all their strength back because loss of strength is an indication that there may be some permanent nerve injury going on. And lastly is numbness. People that get nerve compression get pins, needles, tingling pain, but they also get numbness. Numbness in the sense that you can't quite feel that portion of your foot. It's usually not painful. It's just numb like you have a big sock on. Surgery in general is a little bit of a crapshoot for treating numbness. I generally never do surgery just for numbness because it almost never gets better. A micro decompression frame anatomy is almost always done at a surgery center. It only takes about an hour and you go home the same day after a few hours. Um, you wear a lumbar corset, which is a soft brace for six weeks. We start physical therapy at six weeks and then uh, back to the gym at around uh, eight weeks. There's some risks of directly decompressing the nerve. The first is nerve injury because we're working around the nerve that's less than one in a thousand. We do have somebody in the room called a neuromonitoring individual watching your nerves as we're operating. There's a chance of a dural tear, which is a tear in the covering of the nerve. The nerves swim in fluid. That fluid is covered by a thin sac as thin as saran wrap. If the bone spur is scarred to the sac, as we remove the spur, the sac could tear. It's not a big deal. Spinal fluid leaks out. We repair it. Uh, it doesn't change the ultimate outcome of surgery. It delays, it delays your recovery by one or two days chance of infection less than 1%. And of course, we're just opening up the window. There's still a chance of anything else happening at that level. We're not locking that level in place. So that level can still move back and forth just because you clean uh, the bone spur off of the nerve. That can lead to fracture, instability, recurrent nerve compression, etc. The biggest issue with a direct decompression is it's often not enough. And, and many patients are not candidates for a direct decompression because the foramenal stenosis is coming from, again, disc height collapse, where there's physical compression up down of that foramen because of the disc height collapse. And by doing a decompression, taking some of the spur off, you are not recreating room in an up down manner. And also when there's scoliosis or there's abnormal curvature, that abnormal curvature causes nerve compression. Taking the pressure off the nerve is not gonna correct that curvature which is really the underlying biomechanical issue that's pushing on the nerve. So one of the biggest 
complications of a direct decompression is it's pretty much that it doesn't work because you haven't done enough to really fix the structural problem that's causing the compression in that foramen or the stenosis. So the other type of surgery that is a little bit more tried and true for significant foramen stenosis is something called indirect decompression and fusion. So fusion is taking rod screws and cages to stabilize that segment and create permanent space for that nerve. Almost all of these surgeries rely on taking this disc completely out and after taking the disc out, putting a cage in to elevate the disc height so you're actually giving space within that foramen. Now often just by taking the disc out and putting a cage or an implant there create room for the foramen, you do not have to make an actual opening to directly decompress the nerve because you're indirectly decompressing it by taking the disc out, putting the cage in, you know that you've now created height for that nerve. So it does allow for a less invasive fusion type surgery operation. In our next video, we'll be talking about the three different types of lumbar interbody fusions for indirect decompression to treat foramenal stenosis. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click the like and subscribe button.